So you're about to have your first kid when Karen, your nosy neighbor, comes over and says, are you saving the cord blood from your child? Oh no, you should definitely do that. They can save your kid with those cells. You know, they can print new organs for them. Or if they die, they can make a new kid for you. What? <laughs> Hello people, welcome to ChatterDocs. I'm Dr. Tor and I'm an internal medicine physician. In this channel, I talk about everything and anything in medicine and I believe that learning about health and medicine does not have to be boring. So thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for subscribing and liking if you do. And please don't forget to turn on notifications so you will never miss anything. A while back, one of my cousins who never calls me called me and said hi. So I immediately knew that he's having a medical question. He actually is having a baby and he was asking me whether he should store the cord blood of his kid in a bank for reusing in the future. And I understand this could be the concern of so many new parents. But what is the umbilical cord blood? As you may know, and if you don't, please don't have a kid. After a kid is born, their umbilical cord is being cut. The leftover blood that remains in the blood vessels of the placenta and in the portion of the umbilical cord attached to it is called umbilical cord blood, or we're gonna call it UCB. It's obvious that after birth, the baby Baby won't need this portion of the blood. So the banking process is that they collect a couple of milliliters of this blood and they seal it in a bag and they send it to the blood bank to be tested and stored properly. But why do they do that? So the umbilical cord blood or UCB contains normal blood cells like red blood cells, white blood cells, plasma, yada yada yada. But it's also very rich in hematopoietic stem cells which are the blood forming baby cells that we also can find in the bone marrow. So so because of that, in the future this can be used to treat a couple of medical disorders including being used in bone marrow transplantation. So far the UCB have been used to treat about 80 hematologic disorders including leukemia, myelodysplasia, lymphoma, etc. That sounds great, right? It feels like those science fiction movies when they store some cell and then they grow it later and then they can transplant it back to your body to treat your medical conditions. It sounds very appealing, but we should remember that most of the umbilical cord bloods that are being used to treat a condition are not your own umbilical cord blood. Meaning that most of them are the UCB of other people being stored that are now being used to treat your condition. Today, hundreds of thousands of UCB samples are being stored and tens of thousands of transplants are being done to treat hematologic disorders. In fact, transplanting the UCB is now more common than bone marrow transplant from another person. So should I store my baby's umbilical cord blood to be used in the future? Before answering this question, let me tell you if you decide to store your baby's UCB, what options do you have? You've got a few options. Option number one, public banks. By donating your baby's UCB to a public bank, you make it possible for the hospitals or universities to use these samples to help individuals in need, meaning um, sick babies can use your kid's sample for the bone marrow transplant in the future or for the sake of research. If your baby is also sick or you have another kid who is sick you can access your own kids UCB for the treatment purposes there are several public court blood banks in the US as I can show you on the screen right now I will also leave a link to the list of the public banks in the description storing your baby's UCB in public banks are usually free the second option is the private banks. There are several private umbilical cord blood banks that store your baby's umbilical cord for a fee. Well, of course, there was an opportunity to make big bucks and there are 100 people after it. It's the US, man. Money talks, BS walks. But anyways, so for parents who want to store their baby's UCB privately and keep it safe to be used for their own kid in the future, probably, possibly, not a big chance, for transplant, which is called autologous, autologous, I don't know the pronunciation, I have to Google it. Autologous. Autologous means transplanting the person's own blood or cells to themselves. Wow. Or if they want to use those stem cells for their other kids who might have a disease or condition, which is called allogenic transplant, they have the option to pick those private banks. Now, if you choose to store your baby's UCB and your baby is not being born in one of those hospitals that have public UCB bank, you can go on Google and find private UCB bank and they will send you the instructions, they will send you a kit and they will handle the transport and everything and they will keep and store your baby's UCB usually for 18 to 20 years for a fee but how much is the fee I'm gonna tell you later keep you in suspense you know 
There's also a third option which is called directed banks. These banks specifically collect and store UCB from the babies with certain genetic conditions to be used potentially in the future for regenerative purposes to treat that condition. These banks are running a lot of research and clinical trials on specific disease and how to treat them using the stem cells. The question is, is there any difference between the private banks and the public banks, apart from the money you're paying, of course, and the answer to that question is both yes and no, meaning that the private banks should meet certain criteria and certain requirements and they have to obtain certain accreditation as those required by the public banks. So certain standards are being kept. However, there are minor differences between maternal eligibility criteria and also the number of cells that they're collecting. And these things might affect viability of the cells throughout the time, meaning that the long term viability of the stem cells might be less but usually the private banks can store the UCB for about 20 years forgot to wear my glasses but the big question and the elephant in the room is should I store my baby's cord blood or not now it really depends on who you ask because if you look at the private banks website they're gonna tell you oh this is a miracle it's a biological insurance against future disease we're gonna treat a lot of disease and whatnot and I'm not denying that a big body of research is ongoing and a lot of progress has been made on how to use stem cells to treat a lot of medical conditions but the reality is at the moment the chances of your child using their own UCB over time is something between 1 in 400 to 1 in 200,000 that is 0 0.0000000 Zero 0.005 very low and the reason is the stored blood cannot always be used because if you have a genetic condition those stem cells that are being stored do have that genetic condition as well so in a lot of genetic problems those are just useless also the effective viability of these stem cells are between 15 to 20 years at the moment so they're not forever that's why the American Congress of Obstetrics and Gynecologists such a mouthful and the American Academy of Pediatrics do not recommend routine cord blood banking. It is only recommended for the parents who do have another child with certain genetic and blood disorders who can benefit from this other child's cord blood. But if your baby is being born in one of those places who have access to public cord blood banks, families are always encouraged to store their baby's cord blood to help other kids in need and to help the research. All in all, if you decide to bank your baby's cord blood, this is not a decision to be made at the last minute so you should think of it ahead of time and coordinate with the blood bank to make the arrangements to store your baby's cord blood now regarding the private cord blood banking let's remember although that the chances of your baby's sample being used for treatment of hematologic disorder in themselves or in their siblings in the future are not very big but there's a lot of research going on exploring the possibility of treating different both hematologic and non hematologic disorders in children using using their own umbilical cord blood. Now time to answer the million dollar question. How much does it cost for you to store your baby's umbilical cord blood in a private bank? Of course, the prices are different. There's a lot of different places with a lot of competition going on and you should definitely do your research on the web and also ask your ob doctor as far as which blood bank to pick. But the price usually ranges between three to $5,000 for the whole 18 to 20 years. That is something around $200 a year. Believe it or not, but when you go online to search for this, there's a lot of websites that give you quotes and stuff, just the same as when you search for insurance for your car or for your house. Thanks for watching my video. If you're having a baby, congratulations in advance. I hope you have a fantastic, healthy, cute baby. If you learned something from this video, don't forget to smash the like button, as we always ask, to recommend this to your other friends who might be having a kid or who might be thinking about having a kid or are just doing it without protection and they might have a surprise kid.